Hello everyone, my name is Zinila Bidin Muad. In this tutorial video, I'm going to describe the application we built called Ordinalysis. Ordinalysis stands for the analysis of ordinal data. Our objective is to serve users working on ordinal problems with, with tools such as visualization plots and ordinal metrics to understand the structure of the ordinal data in the Latin space. We offer a panel of damage reduction techniques, including the one that we developed called BVP, which is suitable and was designed for the projection of ordinal data. So let's see this uh, in details. First thing, first thing uh, the user uh, should do is to uh, upload the um, the files, uh, the log files. So I'm going to do it for uh, the synthetic data and for the real data. So these files will contain all the steps that, are, that um, were done by the user either for the synth uh, synthetic uh, data or the real data. So um, actually we have three tabs in this application. The first one can be seen like an educational uh, tool uh, to understand how the visualization uh, plots um, varies with the number of parameters of uh, ordinal data and how the um, quantification metrics also um, varies uh, with these um, uh, changements. So I will first create uh, synthetic data, we choose one of the three types, um, Swiss roll, uh, in two dimension. I will select for instance uh, six classes, um, I will choose a random number of instances. This is the number of points in each class, the noise or standard deviation, and this is the factor for multiplied by p for the Swiss roll data. So uh, uh, now I should click on plot data and process latter space. This will um, create my uh, feature space or latter space in 2D and uh, two types of visualizations. So this is my feature space. Uh, I have six uh, classes and uh, these are two types of visualization. This is the first type and this is the second type. Each type of visualization is related to one of the ordinal metrics. There are two ordinal metrics. So um, we will see first this um, visualization plot uh, number one, which is related to the uh, enter class intersection metric. Uh, so this this metric, what, uh, what it does, is um, uh, assess the severity of intersection between the um, other classes, I mean the points of classes inside each cluster. Uh, maybe if I show the cluster, it will help to understand how we do this. So for instance, if I look at um, the cluster one, which is this one, uh, uh, you can see here that I have in the cluster one, uh, instances of the class two, class two. So I have almost twenty percent. So this is explained by the fact that inside the ellipsoid um, um, created uh, around uh, the cluster, uh, the, um, the class, the instances of class one, we can see an intersection with the uh, the ellipsoid of the cluster um two and we count the the number uh, of points uh, that are intersecting with the uh, uh, that are inside this intersection and um, we display them in histogram so this is the first um, this is the first uh, ordinal metric and for the second one is um a comparison between the position of centers in the reference path or the path where the order is respected and the shortest path or the path that passes through the nearest centers. So here we have the same path because the order was respected but if I break the ordinality um, synthetically and I refresh the data by clicking on plot data and process latent space now I will have uh, a different uh, feature space because the po uh, the position of uh, the um, this the um, the classes will change. Uh, maybe if I do it again, because it's random, sometimes the position remains the same. Okay, that's good because we have the class six near to the class one, which means that the ordinality is not respected, and we can see here uh, the that uh, the class 
six is intersecting with the class one inside the cl cluster one and we can see here the paths are not the same which means that something is not uh, correct so uh, this is it and uh, well these are the visualization plots and if we want to see the numbers we can um, uh, export the ordinal matrix here for instance I will uh, create this file and if I open it I can see here the Swiss wall data that I created and the matrix so this is the same pattern that we um, show in the article that we published uh, so this is the first um, metric and this is the second one and this is uh, just to say if it's um, it's if it's zero it means uh, the there is no adjacent classes in each cluster and this is if it's one it means that uh, there are some uh, classes intersecting which are not adjacent so uh, but more details uh, exist in the in the paper to understand clearly how both uh, metrics works so uh, we can go to our application so this is it for the for the for this uh, synthetic uh, latent space uh, and we have the same um, uh, pipeline in uh, the other tabs what differs is the type of data or the, the creation of the data so we can move to the second tab which is process important latent space the difference here is the feature space is real so I will import one of the feature spaces that I have in the form of um, either MATLAB file or uh, Excel file so here I have four classes I will select for instance uh, to avoid um, passing too much time sorry I will select for instance uh, PCA and LDA in the in two dimension so here we can see that I have uh, 1728 uh, uh, observation and 21 variables and uh, if I process this um, this latent space and project it, project it to two dimension using PCA and LDA, so this is my feature space um, in uh, in uh, in PCA. Uh, this is the same visualization plots that we saw. You can see here that the paths are not the same, which means that the ordinality is not uh, really well respected. And we can see here uh, that uh, the points are, are sparse. And if we see uh, the LDA, we can see that it is uh, the ordinality is better uh, projected, uh, and we can see that there is in fact um, an order respected between the classes, and this also is expressed uh, through the um, the visualization plot of the second ordinality metric. Um, so this is it also we can save the ordinal metrics as we did uh, earlier and we can also save uh, the feature space after the projection by uh, once again uh, creating another file and it's called feature space real for instance and if I open my file you can see here I have the feature space in 2d of PCA and the feature space into the of LDA so uh, this is it for the second tab and for the third and the last tab uh, this tab was designed for those who have ordinal data set but um, images so you can load your images for instance I have here some ordinal metric um, sorry ordinal data um, of um, of uh, some melon uh, discs uh, containing pathogens uh, and there is uh, like a severity um, increasing with uh, uh, an increase in the surface of pathogen uh, on the upper uh, surface of the leaf so here is the distribution of my images it's unbalanced and here I have four type of features I have LBP and the uh, GL same features which are um, uh, textual uh, texture features and here I have deep features of uh, the architecture VG, VG16 and the ResNet50 so I will uh, maybe just choose uh, LBP because otherwise it might take time or just GSM uh, maybe BPP, LBP is better and um, I will extract the feature 
so we, once again we'll have the same visualization plots we'll have the feature space and uh, the histogram uh, for the ordinal uh, the first ordinal metric and uh, we will have the um, the uh, the second ordinal metric the pass so now i will uh, i will uh, use the um, the dimensional reduction techniques to project from uh, from uh, the from the raw uh, latent sp uh, real uh, latent space to the uh, 2d or uh, 3d so here i will choose 2d so we will just wait until the um, the features are uh, computed which is the case now we have 243 um, descriptors or variables uh, for the 421 images i will choose um, just pca and uh, bvp in two dimension and i will once again click on the same button process latent space and plot data so as you can see here we have the feature space and we have our in uh, histogram uh, that shows the intersection between the classes we have the both passes and uh, we can uh, visualize the other dimension reduction techniques that were projected also by clicking on the um, one that we want to display and then we refresh the plots and uh, so uh, this is it uh, we already saw that we can um, project the feature space after project um, sorry save the feature space after projection save the ordinality metrics uh, what we have here is save the feature space because initially we don't have feature space we computed it here the lbp so if we want to uh, extract um, or export this uh, lbp feature we can just click here and s save it in a file so uh, this is it and as you can see here uh, in window uh, log window i can i have um, the history of all the steps that, that i did for instance um, here i'm reading the images i'm choosing the lbp i'm processing the pca uh, pca and bvp I visualize B PCA, I visualize BVP, and if I look at the synthetic one, so here I have the first parameters to select the dimension reduction, uh, sorry, to create the synthetic data, and then uh, here I have uh, the same parameters, but um, uh, well, maybe we uh, we changed something uh, to have uh, this or click it both times, and here we have the f the fact that we changed the breaking ordinality to um to break the uh, the um, the ordinality of the of the synthetic uh, data set um, um and uh, this is where when we exported the ordinal matrix so this log file uh whenev whenever actually you uh, upload once again the um, the the window uh, sorry the log file it will uh, it will be cleared so if you want to preserve this you should um, save it in another file otherwise uh, it will be uh, it will not remain in the same folder uh, sorry file so uh, this is it i hope that it was uh, clear and uh, thank you for your attention